In this video, we get some fuel system upgrades. Stay tuned to see what I got for the crew. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Matt. We got some major upgrades for the fuel system for the Chevy Cruze. They just came in. Let's check them out. Ah! <laughs> I hope they packed this well. I'm sure they did. It's just a big ass box with some injectors. Ladies and gentlemen, I went with Snake Eater Performance Injectors. I've heard a lot of great things about them. I've seen them on the Boosted Boys channel. So I figured, what the hell? Let's give them a try. So what these are, it's their Pro Series. Let's figure out how to cut into this damn box. So it's their Pro Series and they are genuine Bosch injectors. From what I understand, they're developed in conjunction with Bosch for Snake Eater. Here's what we get inside the package. Damn. So here's the inline fuel filter that I got. This is a 10 on the, the micro, whatever you want to call it. This is a little 10 micron, I believe is what they call it. Man, they make, man, they make this thing look a lot bigger in the pictures. And here you go, folks. I mean, this thing's uh, pretty tiny, but should do the trick. Yeah, this is a 10 an, and I've got some, just I believe I had, no, I had to order those through another company. Anyways, I got fittings to go to an 8 an line from 10 an, but here's the real meat and potatoes. What are you trying to do to me here? This looks like a cigar box. So I break the seal, I can't return it. My package was damaged when I re received it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we got a couple little stickers. Let's see what this is. I believe it's the flow chart for the injectors. But here you go. I don't know if you can even make any of that out, but apparently they're matched under a percent, I forget what the stats are exactly, but there's that stuff. So what these are is 2200 CC injectors, ladies and gents. Yes, you heard that correctly. 2200 CC injectors. It's probably about as big as we can get for a single injector. Got their name on it right there, Snake Eater Performance. And these are the long style to fit my vehicle. Even though I do have a custom intake, I did use the standard 60 millimeter length. Um, I mean, one of the things I would like to see, maybe it doesn't make a difference, is other injectors would actually have some sort of protected cap at least on this end, but I'm sure these will work fine and dandy for our purposes so we can max this little turbo out to 43 plus PSI of boost. But the price was really good on these, um, maybe even close to half of what competitors charge, so why not? Let's give them a try. Let's open the next thing that will help upgrade this fuel system. Ah! All right, we got our next package here. This one is going to be juicy. Got my packing clip. What I ended up ordering, you'll see here in a second, but here are our fittings. Ah, oh, here we go. Wow, this is this is quite heavy. Ah, oh, here we go. That's some pretty nice packaging there. You are going to love this. This is about much fuel. Well, I mean, there's a step up from this. But, ladies and gents, we have not one, not two but three fuel pumps. So these are DW300 fuel pumps. We got three of them. 
<laughs> that one fell. <laughs> but we got three of them. Let's take a peek at one of them. Man, the packaging is really nice. Ah! Man, it's just like the, the picture there. Surprise, surprise. Man, that's, that's awesome. So we have three DW300 fuel pumps. They'll flow 340 liters per hour. Comes with all, you know, everything you need to connect the thing. We've got a little fuel filter, our wiring, some clamps. It's very nice. Nice stuff. So three of these in which, let's see if I can't not lose some of this stuff again. Huh, I guess they give you some extras. I don't know. Some more fuel filters here. Got some stickers. That's pretty cool, man. 20th anniversary. So these guys have been doing this for a while. And then here is what is going to house it. Can't necessarily say this is the meat and potatoes because the pumps are really, I guess, the heart of this thing. And here we are. Got a 5.5 liter surge tank. So this is their 5.5 SST staged surge tank. And which this thing is built here and here, up at the top. I don't know if the bottom is billet, but. So the way this works is we have a pump out. We'll have three pumps feeding here. We can have one pump running during normal driving that will feed pressure and fuel to the fuel rail. And then whenever we start coming on in boost, we have those other two fuel pumps kick on give us all the fuel flow. And so this is a 10 an, these are eight an. I will reduce this down to eight an. I don't think I'll need any more than that, but we can always bump it up down the road. Wow, that's nice. I think something that would be nice of them would be to include an Allen wrench for this thing. But whatever, take this thing apart, open it up. So here is the billet pump hanger. So we'll press our three pumps in here, feed it to the outlet here, and then our stage one, stage two. We'll have to put another relay, wire this thing up towards where it has enough amperage to drive everything. And then we've got all of our fittings to plumb the thing. So really, if you wanted to, you could run one external pump, two or three. You know, who knows? I mean, I might not even need the third, but we'll run it anyways. I initially was just going to buy two pumps, but I think it was only $30 more just to get the package. So we've got all the fuel pump we need. Then I believe the 300 and 200 pumps do require these adapters. We have two different size fittings. This is for the 400 pumps. These are for the 300 and 200. And then we've got a couple little block off plugs here just in case you only want to run one pump. See if you can't take a peek down in there. Guess there's really nothing to see. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the upgrade, we got ourselves a surge tank. I was kind of considering doing a fuel cell. However, I really don't see a point at this stage just yet to do a fuel cell. Keep the factory filler neck, factory fuel level. If you're about as clear as mud about how surge tanks work as I was, here's a diagram I put together to kind of help explain how this works. So essentially we still have the fuel pump in the stock gas tank. Now that fuel pump is a DW300C, so it's the compact version, but it still flows at 340 liters. This is going to be a low pressure pump that feeds gasoline from the gas tank to the surge tank to fill that surge tank up. From there, the three pumps within the surge tank, well, during normal operation, one pump will be running, sending fuel pressure from that surge tank to the fuel rail. During boost, all three pumps will be running, sending as much fuel as possible 
keeping that fuel pressure up under boost. Now what's not used by the fuel injectors will be regulated back and returned to the surge tank, keeping it full. However, during normal driving operations, once the surge tank is full, the fuel will then return back to the stock gas tank. So essentially we're sending gasoline low pressure from the stock fuel tank to the surge tank to fill it up. We're sending high pressure to the fuel rail to feed the engine. What's not used is sent back to the surge tank to keep it filled up. And whatever overflow we have during normal driving conditions that's sent back to the gas tank and it just basically overflows. Sound confusing enough? Feel free to download that diagram. I put this together myself. So in order to make all this work, I've got some 6N PTFE line from Evil Energy. Normally I go with Fregola. However, I heard some really great things about the quality of Evil Energy stuff. So we're gonna give their fittings and all that a try. Their fittings are really nice. Everything you see on this diagram here is what we have here. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything we need to plumb this thing up and get all the fuel, probably enough fuel to support a thousand horsepower. Not that I think this turbo will push a thousand horsepower. I think we'll be lucky to reach 600, but we shall see. Next piece of the puzzle came in for the fuel upgrade. I'm not gonna be able to put my camera on a camera stand as when I went racing and took the camera to the track, I mistakenly left my damn camera sitting on that trailer, fell off, got crushed a little bit. So I do my best to do this one-handed. <clears throat> Probably not the greatest tool for opening this up, but. What we have here is a flex fuel sensor mount in which it allows for 10 an of fuel flow. So essentially this thing splits off. I don't know if you can see that. Rather than wiring the fuel and having fuel go through the sensor and another path coming back, wiring it again, this makes it simple towards where it's just in line. You still get 10 and worth the fuel flow. It's a pretty nice little unit. Something I definitely needed. It's certainly a choke point in the fuel system. So this will help us get all the fuel flow that we need. There we go. We got a way to mount it. It's got a little O-ring so this whole thing pulls apart. Put your sensor in here, put it back together, bolt it up, and she's ready to rock. And then I have a couple ORB, 10 and ORB to 8 and the whole fuel system is going to be 8 and it should be plenty for our needs. If not, we can always bump it up to 10 and, but I think 8 and should be fine for now for what we're trying to do. Well, thanks for tuning in. That's about it for the updates that I have on the car. In the next video, we'll install the surge tank. And I'll kind of walk you through how I'm gonna go about installing it as much as I possibly can. It's hard to film stuff underneath the car, but if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And until next time, peace out.